Hello and welcome to the show. On this week's Downhill Chaos, I start with a D-Series pickup truck with a trailer. And not just not just any old trailer. Yes, I'm, I'm towing a Hummer. I'm going to try and tow a Hummer uh, down the mountain. I will be honest, this is probably the the trickiest vehicle I have ever tried this with. I did have, there was another D-Series with like a logging trailer. It wasn't, it wasn't a log, it was like plastic tubes or something like that. Um, that didn't work so well and this uh, also didn't get off to a great start. Uh, the trailer may have wobbled and got caught on the edge and fell off and then I promptly fell over with the truck. This first corner was damn hard. It just... <laughs> Normally, this is you just don't even think about this corner in most cars. It's often flat out. Occasionally, there is a little dab on the brakes. With the with the higher lifted trucks, you often have to brake a tad so that so as not to roll them. But this was problematic because the trailer likes to sort of do do its own thing, and you didn't really have very much control of it. I was like, this is one of the few vehicles that has a model of a person. I think it's the first one I've seen with a model of a person in it. it does strange things when. <laughs> when it gets damaged. That's not how a person should look like. It will, you, you want to go see see somebody about that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, this first corner was incredibly difficult. The, the bumps coupled with the suspension of this stuff made it very hard to keep the trailer under control at any any speed whatsoever. The minute you started to try and take... Uh, I think I, I had it in kilometres by accident to start with, but over sort of 30, 40 kilometres an hour, the trailer just had a mind of its own, and you had very little control. I made it past the first few corners and then promptly fell off almost straight away. I ran out of stopping and ran out of turning and then fell off the mountain. The truck actually survived that little trip very, very well. Unfortunately, it was wedged between a hummer and a tree, so it wasn't actually getting out of there anytime soon, but it did survive uh, pretty well. I kind of-ish got the hang of the first corner. I, I, I remembered to fix the speedo, uh, the speedo up, uh, but there was another problem with the trailer. It does that. Nah, it just disconnects itself. When it gets really, really bumpy, I got frustrated and may have crashed into it. Um, the, the Hummer on the back is not like a deformable thing. It's just a sort of a stationary prop, so collisions go a little bit glitchy with it. Uh, the, the problem is, is because it is very bumpy along here, the trailer occasionally gets slightly caught on the floor and that disconnects it from the truck. I may have got, I may have got stuck on some bumps and then I just couldn't get the, <laughs> get the truck back under control and then the Hummer very helpfully sort of forced it into a wall and now it's it's stuck. But the truck uh, isn't getting out of there anytime soon. I did survive the first couple of corners at one point and things were looking kind of okay-ish, sort of. I mean, it's very, very slow, but it was at least where well, it wasn't anymore. <laughs> that was literally the story of, of, this, of this thing. I could, if I was very, very slow, get it around the course. I then again decided that uh, uh, the truck deserved to be thrown off something. Uh, the truck actually did. It survived quite a lot of me chucking it off things. Uh, the problem was that the trailer, again, with what a weird deformed person, the trailer would disconnect on the slightest bump. So I was having to try and find routes that would avoid the bumps. Also, it is a very heavy trailer, and I, in this case, I couldn't actually stop. I was on the brakes. I couldn't stop it from rolling down the hill, and then physics decided my truck should be on its roof. And then it was much happier with that. Yeah, <laughs> it got. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't have that problem again. I didn't have that problem as noticeably again uh, on on that section. It just, at that stage, the trailer had so much momentum I couldn't stop it. And in the end, it, it ended up be, being on its roof at a different corner. Well, I found another bump to have a problem with. Not so much a problem with the truck, but there's there's the trailer just vanishing. I had to. I had to try and map out where every little bump was on this course. Sure, you know, there are a few bad bumps I've had problems with cars on, mostly at the tree hairpin. I can have problems with, with road vehicles, not liking that. Uh, back at the first corner and, and similar things were happening. There was many times I had to cut out, oh, I cut out of this, that the just same thing happened on this first corner, just the trailer getting away from you. But, um, yeah, I like, I'm used to having problems with the occasional bump. The tree hairpin can be, can be a bit problematic, and, the, and on the jumps as well. Some, some of the road cars can have issues. The thing was with, with this is that just any bump, any bump, I, I could have I could have issues with. And <laughs> I don't know quite what happened there at turn one. I, I I was trying to turn in and the trailer got carried away and I brushed a tree, and I and then then ended up doing an endo and falling over. Now I'm, yeah, <laughs> I I don't know I don't know quite. Anyway, 
after much time, look, I got to the first jump! Well, there's not really a jump in this. It's more of a small hill, followed by a small downhill section. It was fine. I got over that without any problems. This was a problem area. As I said before, this is a nasty area. Cars often struggle sort of putting the power down out of this corner because of it being so bumpy. Well, in this case, it's not putting the power down that's the problem. It's the trailer getting caught on the bumps. And then the, the trailer's disconnected again. And now it's sat, it's sat across the road in completely the wrong... Yeah. It does that at this hairpin. And it was a real pain because I... It was so hard to find. I tried all sorts of different lines. Problem is, with the shade uh, through there and with the, the texture, you just can't see where the bumps are. So it is pretty much potluck as to, as to what you're doing. You can't take that hairpin too tightly, otherwise it's a very steep drop that then the, the car will get stuck on or you'll lose the trailer on anyway. Amazingly, one time I did get past the tree hairpin. And here we are going around the hairpin and then there's the second jump. This flummoxes a lot of cars, and it certainly flummoxed this. I was trying to slow it down in an attempt to go very, very slowly over that, because I wouldn't have time to speed up, and if I tried to take the jump at normal speed, it would just fling the Hummer off. Uh, but it, uh, it didn't quite work so well. I can't, again, that was, that was the only other place that I couldn't stop the trailer in time. I couldn't physically get the trailer slowed down for that. It was just too much momentum going on. The brakes of the truck couldn't deal with it. And <laughs> tree happened again. And bye bye trailer on a completely different point. I've never had a problem on, on that particular po point before. And truck goes off a cliff and then bounces into a tree. And annoyingly still works. At this stage, I got very fed up with the trailer. I left it at some point. I can't remember where I left it. Uh, however, this truck does actually have uh, another interesting, an interesting thing about it. If the front wheels even just brush something, it gets very unhappy. It, the suspension really doesn't like it. So I, I made it over the jump, and then we do an, um, a, a, a physics front. I, don't ask. I don't know. But <laughs> I don't know why this it, it likes going up, especially after you've, you've busted. Well, I must have busted some part of the suspension. It likes going up on the front, and yeah, I managed to do a, a sort of roly poly uh, <laughs> over the front bumper. After much time and much annoyance at this, I had to give up. I can't do it. I cannot get the trailer to the bottom of the mountain. It kept doing that. I kept getting disconnected and falling off at random points. And I, I honestly don't think it would ever have made it over the second jump. I don't think it could have. It could have ever done it. So it's going to be a first for Downhill Chaos, but the the, the trailer D series is going to get a DNF. Anyway, up next we have got the Uber Covert, at least that's what I call it. It's another four-wheel drive Covert with quite a lot of power. This time this one's got the Uber turbocharger. It's, it can be a very quick car. It does have quite a lot of turbo lag up until about 5,000 RPM. Once you get past that, then it all of a sudden goes very, very quickly. You may have caught me out having just been driving a very slow truck into the first corner. I wasn't expecting the speed, and I may have flung it at some trees. Nah, not the not the cleverest thing. Uh, <laughs> cleverest thing I've ever done. Second attempt, though, things were going much, much smoother as we come up towards the second jump. Fortunately, I couldn't get to the jump as I just ran a tiny bit wide. I don't think I've ever hit that tree before. I think that's one of the few things I haven't crashed into <laughs> before on this course. Just running a tiny bit wide. Again, same corner. This time, tried taking a tighter line. That wasn't also that wasn't a good idea. You got <laughs> <laughs> that was a little bit too tight a line. We've seen that happen a few times to cars. I was surprised, didn't necessarily expect the covert. This isn't a massively high covert um, to, to roll over there, but it, it did, if you're not careful. As I said, it can be a very, very quick car. May have got carried away a little bit over the jump. Slightly, slightly out of position heading up the jump, and we got a bit too much air time, and then sort of smacked the ground on the landing, and we were never going to stop uh, in time. Over the second jump again, and amazingly, Despite having a lot of time on two wheels, I kept the covert. Somehow, it didn't it didn't fall over, but a nasty tree would uh, would screw things up. That tree I have hit many a time. It's an annoying one because you're coming you're coming out of that corner, and the car sort of naturally wanting to drift to the outside of the track there, and that tree is just in the way as you're trying to put power down. And yet I've hit that a few times, and, and it killed the covert on that. But it didn't take very long before I got a, a good run with this car. This has got interesting suspension. I don't know how on earth it works, but despite the fact that it looks very much like the normal Covert, it's very good over the bumps. Like this is as good as most of the off-road lifted trucks I've had. I don't know how it I don't know how it does it. 
Because uh, it, it's, it's it doesn't get damaged very often. Like you don't, you don't see the bodywork scraping along the floors and bits falling off it. It's very rare that you see that only on like a big collision, mainly over the jumps, do you ever see that. And somehow everything's okay. It's a very good off-road car. I don't know how, <laughs> how on earth it works. But uh, yeah, it's, it's very, very good suspension on this car. And as I said, it's pretty quick. It's four-wheel drive. You can throw it around. There's no fear of rolling over in the corners unless you do something silly. Uh, it's not going to sort of roll over just by handbraking it around a corner. You'd have to hit a banking. Provided you don't do that, it's a it's a lovely car to drive. This one, very very good vehicle and to drive. Okay, you know it's it's not got the same ride height. So over that second jump, yes, it doesn't really like the landing very much. It doesn't land that particularly smoothly. But everywhere else. It's very quick. The only downside, really, to this car is yes, it can have it can have a bit of it can have a little bit of turbo lag going on it as we cross the line and then smack it into the building. It's a nice car. I really like this one. Great car to drive. Very good suspension on this thing. Damage-wise, apart from the, the stuff you see after it's crossed the line, yeah, we smashed it up then. Really, there wasn't very much on that run. I mean, despite despite being a road car on a on a bumpy off-road course. The only place that it would have ever taken any damage was on the second jump, and even then, it wasn't particularly significant. So yeah, some decent suspension on that Covert. Our third and final vehicle, it's another D-Series. This time, it is sort of like a Rebel Technical style style of vehicle. Now this in intrigued me. I think it's got the same, I'm presuming it's got the same engine, same kind of stats as the normal D-Series. But I can't decide whether it'll be whether it'll be lighter or heavier. I'm thinking this might be a little bit heavier. I mean, the weight distribution will be slightly strange because you've got a big gun on the top of it, that I presume is not exactly light. Um, but of course, you don't have the cab of the truck. Anymore, you do have seats in the in, in in the back where there wouldn't be, and you've got a big roll cage. So I think perhaps a slightly heavier truck. May, I was hoping the weight distribution might be a little better. I'm I'm not I'm not sure. I don't think it is. <laughs> when you turn into that corner, and the, we have back to the normal lifted truck problem of turn into corner and then fall over because we've taken the corner too vigorously, and then we slide down a mountain. This truck did like tumbling. I'm not sure. I think it might be something to do with the fact that it has the gun on the top that creates like a, a slight point somewhere because it really does tumble very well. This time managing to get caught by a tree. The trees like catching vehicles as well on this game. And we've, we've seen that uh, seen that a few times. First corner, I can take a decent speed through the first corner. I may have got a bit too carried away in the second part of the, and yeah, now we go... <laughs> Now we go back to tumbling uh, across parts of the level, and eventually we will, <laughs> we will come to us. I love how the exhaust is all like the exhaust and all the drive line and everything. Suspension bits are all also painted in the uh, in the camouflage paint. Yeah, the main problem with this vehicle is the rolling. It just turned into a corner, and that wasn't a particular. That wasn't particularly high speed, and it wasn't particularly bumpy. That's one of the smoothest corners on the track. I mean, it does go downhill a little bit, but uh, that was more than enough to flick the truck over onto its roof. After the second jump, I'm trying to slow it down, trying to stop it in time, and it's not quite going to do it. Carried a little bit too much speed into there, and with a very very steep banking, the truck didn't need much encouragement to. <laughs> to fall over and then promptly land uh, around the the finishing point. The rolling is, is the main problem with this. Otherwise, it's a, it's a pretty pretty damn good vehicle. I mean, that's a very, very slow speed. Ro well, I say a roll. It didn't actually roll, but it w I, I managed to save it, which wasn't much better. In that it's, still <laughs> it's still going. As I said, it's still, it still it wants to keep rolling. It doesn't, it doesn't stop rolling very well. It keeps going. I don't think I've had a vehicle that's covered sort of more uh, more area of the track when when rolling like occasionally you see a car roll down multiple levels but not as much as this one again another instance i saved it from rolling uh, which, which wasn't didn't really help the truck we've gone down one of the levels we're still going we're going down another one and we when on that time we we kind of get a bit squashed and now we have a uh, flat packed truck <laughs> Yeah, strange vehicle. Uh, strange vehicle. This one. Interesting rollover characteristics. Once it gets going, it just doesn't stop. As far as driving wise goes, it's fairly similar. I'll be honest to to the D series. I think while yeah, I'm I'm guessing there's a little bit more weight to it. The overall the overall weight distribution, if you like, the center of mass, I think is around the same on this. It still uh, still falls over uh, <laughs> fairly straightforwardly, and the problem is. With it doing that, I have to be slower through the corners. I can't take as much corner speed as perhaps I would like. I, 
yeah, provided you drive it safely, of course, it's a big off-road truck. You know, provided provided you don't like, really chuck it into the corners, it's perfectly capable of dealing with the bumps around here. I mean, we, I, I put this through a lot of punishment of chucking it off stuff when it would roll. Yeah, it is a strong vehicle. It kept going. It survived quite a lot of quite a lot of the falls. Uh, well, it didn't end up on its roof or stuck in a ditch somewhere. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a good off-road vehicle, but like all of the, the big off-road trucks, it, it, it falls over. If they have the ground clearance to deal with the bumps, they often also have too high a centre of mass and fall over constantly. And yeah, that's a concern with this. If you're careful with it, if you're a little bit slower, you can, you can get away uh, around the course. And as we come up towards the line, the D-Series technical has survived the course and I managed to get it stopped before going into uh, into the building again damage wise I think I may have slightly bent something on the front bump, bumper or a bonnet again that would just be on that second jump it didn't quite have the speed to get a nice landing on that second jump so it slightly bounced off the front I think the bonnet perhaps uh, would have or the bumper sorry looks a little bit bent on there and the bonnet in fact yeah yeah small small amount but you know this is a big off-road truck it is going to deal with the bumps okay and if you don't put it on its roof if you keep it keep it keep it together then yeah it's going to be a fairly decent vehicle on to the times well it's a quick time from the uber cobbler but not quite as quick as i thought it would be a 21-0 around exactly it's exactly the same time as the covert the mid-engine rear-wheel drive covert it's a little bit slower than the uh, chevy the normal d-series slower than the sleeker i actually expected a bit more from that i thought that was going to go higher up the leaderboard because the suspension is very good on that it's a very 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 good off-road for a, a kind of standard road car yeah not sure about that one and uh, further down it's a 121.5 for the the d-series uh, technical thing little bit slower than the game's normal pickup truck. Uh, in interesting to me. I guess it might be a little bit heavier. It's possible I didn't have the greatest of runs with it either, so a small amount of, uh, could, have, could have been uh, to do with the driving. I think it might be a slightly heavier vehicle, so perhaps not quite as quick out of the corners uh, and so on. Anyway, that is it for this video, guys. So thank you very much for watching, and until next time, a uh, goodbye.